What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, Ojama Garrett's back with another episode of uh, How to Grow Wealth series, uh, episode uh, seven, I think it is. And we were on Proverbs six. It's a little confusing for me every day because it should be episode one, Proverbs, whatever. But it don't really matter. Um, so let us just hop right into the reading and I'm going to try to break it down. Oops, sorry, misclicked there. And uh, we're just going to talk. So, Warnings Against Folly. This is chapter six, Proverbs, NIV. I can uh, spell really well and I can, uh, my handwriting is really good. So folly, I'd underline this because I had a previous take, but I had screwed up my uh, my message here. Folly is lack of good sense, foolishness. So foolishness, we really broke this down. I mean, lack of good sense or judgment, stupidity. Um, yeah, so it's pretty self-explanatory, I feel, or at least that's a working enough definition to really talk about it. So warnings against stupidity. Uh, my son, if you have put up security for your neighbor, if you have shaken hands and pledged for a stranger, you have been trapped by what you said and snared by the words of your mouth. So do this, my son, to free yourself since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. Go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep in your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of the fowler. So this is all talking about, um, so this is like, I had to look this up when I read this uh, uh, about two weeks ago, but um, if you put up security for your neighbor, what they're talking about in the biblical uh, context here is like um, co-signing a loan for someone, essentially. If you're going to offer to bail somebody out, uh, so it's like maybe not as some like you know it's not saying that's bad inherently for like it's not saying here specifically for your family or something like that, but um, if you help if you if you promise to help somebody out of a debt um and put yourself into a contract this is going to um be very bad for you so it would be better for you to beg like a beggar to get yourself out of this because um being tied for the debts of another essentially and this is on many levels is going to prevent you from becoming wealthy or per becoming successful in any regard so that is that uh, pro uh, verse six, go to the ants, you sluggard, consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. So this is telling us to talk about, it's talking about ants, um, not even metaphorically, but like kind of metaphorically that we should be like the ants, but I mean, it's not even really, it's saying like one for one ratio that if you just copy an ant, study ants. And I, you know, I might just go do that right after this video, just go look them up and watch, uh, just kind of break down exactly how they do things, what they do and what they like, what their objective is, as a colony and stuff like that. Um, and that'll probably be some, you know, nice little wisdom, nice little knowledge that I could apply to day to day life myself. But it is essentially telling you that like the ant gets its job done. It gets up, it gets to work, gets what it needs to get done. And then it's, it's good to go. The, ant, the ants, ants are a very good um, representation of how to become wealthy because like any place an ant gets into, they grow tremendously. Uh, the colony, like, you know, it starts off as one queen ant, they lay some eggs, and then they grow into this massive colony if they're, like, they're left alone to their own devices. So that's why this is pointing out that ants are very um, good for wealth acquisition. Acquisition meaning, like, wealth acquiring acquisitions is a fancy way of saying it. I like saying the word. So verse 9, how long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest in poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. I can speak to this personally. Um, I always think to myself, you know, I, I have these videos uh, that I need to make every day and I need these quotas that I keep making for myself, but I always just go, you know, I'll, I'll eat first before I get that done. I'll just lay down for a little bit. I'll just take a little nap. I'll just write for a little bit. I'll do this or that. I mean, writing's not that big of a deal, but I always make some excuse just to take a little break and the, all these little breaks add up. And uh, what, what you should try to do is try to do the inverse of that. And I'm, again, I'm trying to do this myself. And I know that the, the more that I beat these habits of like taking little breaks, taking breaks often, um, or just breaks in general, uh, my last job, they were kind of hyper focused. I don't know. All the nine to fives. I know you, you guys, anybody watching this, which I don't think is very many, but anybody who ends, ends up watching this. There's a culture in America that you need to take a 15 minute break after two hours. You need to take a half an hour break, two hours after that, or to half an hour to an hour lunch. And then you need to take a 15 minute break after that. Like, but like to each their own, but me personally, uh, that always throws me out of my flow. 
So like I'll get up, I'll get through the original agitation of my first hour of my work. I'll enter flow state. That first break time comes upon and like I have a decision. Like my last job, I noticed that I was able to skip my first break or prolong it because it's like if you were in the flow state, the high, the high from a flow state, it was better for me to push that break longer and longer and longer and longer away until I started to come down from my flow state and actually needed a break instead of just having set times. But these companies have set times. And it's just, you know, systematizing and optimization and whatever people build the companies. And we just get relaxed into these pa- uh, patterns, uh, traditional wisdom and stuff like that. And there's nothing necessarily inherently wrong with that. But um, being too rigid also causes a lot of issues just in everyday life. Um so sometimes it's not good to take break. I just don't, I, I am of the, um, I would rather get out of work an hour earlier than, ha- than get 15, 30, 15. Cause I would rather just get that hour at the end of my day and just like grind through it. If I need to take a break, you know what I mean? I could go to the bathroom. I can, um, I could sit down for a couple minutes. I can take breaks out of, of necessity, but just time, time breaks are just, they're silly to me. And I know there's like eating or whatever, but I'd be like, I don't want to jump too much further into that. I feel like I've kind of gone off the path here, but um, I feel like even eating, uh, if we break down, whatever, I'll just say it. It's, it's a video. I just need to get the video done. I'm just going to, whatever I feel confident talking about, I'm going to talk about. I feel like eating is even um, not really productive for a work day. Um, that may be a hot take too. Uh, it's just the body can go three weeks without eating or something like that. So it's there's a lot of like people... There's like ultra marathon athletes that need to nourish themselves out of necessity because they're running like hundred like hundred mile days or something like that, or even twenty miles or whatever for a race or whatever, building up to that. And just extreme amounts of training requires more fuel to sustain that type of training. Like you know, if you're a roid head, and you can't just take steroids and get huge. You have to take steroids and eat a lot of food. But okay, so back to what I was saying is that like, I don't feel like normal people and most normal people jobs really need to eat as much as we do. And like, just, I'm speaking from personal, this is my personal experience. A lot of this is coming out and I'm just speaking personally. Like I've gained a lot of weight eating just cause I was like bored. Um, but like when I would go to a job and I would work on that job, I would just wait till I got home to eat. And then just like, that would be my meal. And then I would just maintain my weight cause I'm six feet tall and I'm about, a, at the time I was like 190 pounds. I've gained a little bit of weight cause I've been unemployed for a little bit, but, um, yeah, it's just uh, these are all comment comments about this uh, verse here. Like, you know, all these little things, little sleep, little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. All these little things, I feel like they're they're little traps and they can add up very quickly and then compound out of nowhere. Because like you've heard of the term compounding wealth, right? Um, compounding wealth. I've learned through my experiences that it compounds also the same way the other direction too. Uh, by learning about scale and like sequential processing and batch processing and all these little things like lean manufacturing, 5S, Kaizen, all the other, you know, the dumb business or not dumb. It's not dumb. Some of it's like, it's all really good information or whatever, but it's not like, I don't know, whatever. That My comments are like what I agree. Just learning about it. I've learned that like inefficiencies scale just as much as good habits scale goodness. There's no like, there's no... It's either one direction or the other, and they're both like going like massive directions. So like, as if you get if you do things that make you poor, it seems to like compound like a poorness that like as you do more things to make you poor, you get poor faster over a long period of time, and then it's the same vice versa. So like, if you're not getting rich, you're kind of getting poor. Um, that's kind of what I, like. There's no like chill, main, maintenance, whatever. Um, so yeah, it just comes, that's what I think is saying here. Like it'll come on you like a thief and scare scarcity, like an armed man. Like it'll come up upon you, uh, like out of nowhere and like rob you of anything you have, like any value you have, all these little breaks and stuff, like rob you of your energy, rob you of your wealth, rob you of just all these different things and stuff like that. So that's what I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, commenting on there. I mean, that was a little, whatever, who cares? Um, uh, verse 12, a troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks maliciously with his eye. So this is like a charmer. This is somebody like who's like a, 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 a cool guy, a cool cat. Those cool people, you know what I'm talking about? Them cool, sly, politician, nice dresser, hair slicked back, you know, really nice. I don't know. I, I, I'm talking about, I'm speaking a lot generally here, but some people just like those things. But I'm saying like, you know what I mean when I say like a cool, sly guy. That handwriting's really good, I bet. Anyway. 
signals with his feet and motions with his fingers who plots evil with the seat in his heart he always stirs up conflict therefore disaster will overtake him in an instant he suddenly will be destroyed without remedy all right so i kind of butchered the reading here i should have probably finished this i'm learning as we go here i'm making these little brackets i feel like these are like good starts and ends to finish talking and then just the brackets there represent what, what i'm talking about when i'm talking so this is kind of good so a troublemaker and a villain um corrupt mouth you know so this is your shitters your shit talkers um and everybody on some level is a shitter this is like a thing a term i've come up with it's just like a, a ger generic derogatory term because we live in a pc culture but like you can call somebody a shitter and it's just a generic uh d derogatory term to just like not a derogatory term to describe someone but it's just like somebody who practices a bunch of shitty behavior so they're a shitter and this is just a share uh corrupt mouth corrupt mouth just means like sarcastic all the time you know attitude all the time talks mad shit all the time you know those compliments that are always insults um you know that type of stuff and like i said we're all shitters on some level so don't just go out and do oh i know like we all know who a shitter is in our head but then immediately when you think of a shitter think of yourself too because you're a shitter too we're all shitters but it's just i'm just trying to explain it here i'm not trying to judge nobody but so this is a warning so to the shitters if you are a shitter who wings maliciously with your eye, signals with your feet, and motions with your finger, and you plot evil with deceit in your heart, uh, and you always stir up conflict, shit or shit, you know what I'm saying? Um, therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant, just like up here. Um, they'll come on you like an armed man. It'll come like it'll seemingly come out of nowhere. You know, like think Bonnie and Clyde. They ended in a uh, a thunder of bullets. They didn't die of like old age. They they. Bad guys usually people who live hot headed, live hard, uh, fast, and just do dumb shit, shit or shit, and just like make a bunch of like irrational decisions like that. Uh, cr criminally oriented people, they tend to go down in a, a blaze of glory, not a glory, but they tend to go down in a blaze. They get burned up. Uh, they will be destroyed without remedy. So like, you get it seems like it happened suddenly out of nowhere because like I feel, um, the universe, you know, for secular people, but me, I I believe in a creator that if he did create everything that he would try to, and if, if a creator created everything and wanted everybody to be, you know, and he loved everybody and wanted to, you know, he created everybody to be a big family. He would try to give them as much um, grace and mercy as possible to give them a chance to turn back. And then, but like right when they cross a line, it's over for him. You know, that's kind of how I see it, but you know, that's just my take. Proverbs 16 here. There are six things the Lord hates seven that are detestable to him haughty eyes a lying tongue hands that are shed hands that have shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked schemes a feet that are quick to rush into evil a false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community so haughty eyes haughty means hot shit ha haughty 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 eyes means like proud let's just look it up Arrogantly superior and disdainful. Look haughty, disdain, so similar. AKA synonyms, proud, vain, arrogant, conceited, snobbish, stuck up, pompous. So that's a haughty eyes. So those just, you know what I mean? That's, again, haughty eyes. This goes hand in hand. I've talked multiple times about how pride equal poor. Uh, let me just let me just write that out, actually. I want you guys to be able to read that. So, um, again. Uh, pride equals poor, and my evidence that this is true again, and this is a one-to-one -one ratio, is that they both start with the letter P. That's my first piece of evidence here, and um, they're both one syllable. And um, yeah, other than that, the pride, haughty eyes, arrogant eyes, pompous eyes, pride equals poor. When you're prideful, uh, you have like most most pride is inherently on like. So I'm gonna comment on pride. Um, you know couple minutes here actually maybe 30 seconds to a minute a couple minutes um pride like is inherently a lie too um in a macro sense so like people who are like proud of an accomplishment let's say like you know i just got to raise at work i just got a manager position but it's like yeah and you know if you're if you're cocky about that because you think you're cool because you're hot shit because you like won a game you did well in an athletic event you performed one time your entire life and did really well you make a certain amount of income this year, but you're not guaranteed that next year. Um, 
you have like an accomplishment you went to a certain school like cool other people have too you know what i mean like if you look at any accomplishment any person does like they're all cool accomplishments are cool but to think that you're like not gonna die because of them is just foolish it's stupid like most accomplishments aren't actually as big as people make them out to be um, um from the self like i am really cool i did this thing and I, I, I personally don't even like praise a lot of, I, I would like to hear good job every once in a while. I'm not saying that everybody would like to hear that, but me personally, but I, I don't like getting talked up. Like when people say like, I've heard, you know, you're so smart, you're so gifted, you have a lot going for you. You have da 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 Cause I like, especially now as like the age I'm at, I don't like hearing it because I don't want ever to, I would rather be depressed and uh, low self-worth than get, become an ar arrogant pride asshole who is snobbish and thinks he's better than everybody. And I'm not just morally signaling there. I'm not, I know that's how it, like when I said that, that's how it feels, but I'm not. Um, and it's not to like virtue signal um, humility as like a status symbol. The reason why I do that is because I ultimately believe that if I ever think that I'm hot shit at anything, that's when it's over for me. You know what I mean? Because like I said, this is the pride. This is how pride works. You think you're hot shit. And um, so this takes a little bit of explanation for context here. Uh, so when, so for me personally, if I ever think I'm confident about something, I stop trying to think of solutions to solve things that'll get me. Okay. So if I think I know everything about math, I will no longer try to learn other math concepts or try to read about math. Like, um, or let's say economics. I, and again, this is one I probably need to repent to right now. I, I always, I think of myself on high regard about economics because I love economics. And I know a lot of, I'm, I read a lot about it, but there's always something to be learned. The, the learning is infinite. Um, but yeah, so yeah, just right there. I probably haven't been thinking, like I thought that I'm hot shit about economics. So I never, you know, it's been a little bit actually since I've learned about economics or anything like that. Cause like I'm on another channel teaching about old school RuneScape economics and stuff like that. And I've been getting a lot of I have a community and people look to me as a, a leader to help them make money in RuneScape, but not like, you know what I mean? So like right there, perfect. I repent like it's wrong that I had pride in that area and economics because I have, now that I think about it, it's been weeks since I've like tried to learn. I've tried to read about it, try to learn about it, try to, you know, what are any facts? But I cannot, like, I, I, I love economics because I think it's really fun and it's really cool. But once you're prideful about something and you think that you're hot shit at anything, you're like, you just set yourself up to fail because you're no longer going to try to like, you think that you're invincible. Prideness kind of creates an invincibility about, um, anything. Um, once you think you're hot shit, anything like you'll, you, the, the punch that knocks you out is the one you never see coming. And with pride, you think that you're, you're completely guarded. You're trained up. You've been working really good, but then the thing, boom, you know what I mean? That's what pride does. Like it, it allows the one thing that you're not ready for, which is it only takes one thing to humble somebody with pride uh you know you only have to be wrong once so it creates this false image and since it's false uh you have to do you have to make up a lot of shit you have to like come up with a lot of co that's why you hear hear the words cope and see and stuff like that to um maintain that image of pride um whatever you know what i mean okay i think that's about good i, I, I feel kind of gassed out talking about that so let's just hop back in a lying tongue. Seven things that are like uh, seven that are six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable. A haughty eyes. A lying lying tongue. Pretty self-explanatory. You know what I mean? A lying tongue is stupid. A lying tongue may perceivably. I call these traps all the time too because they they feel like they're gonna. You know, you could lie to somebody. Hey man, I'm really. You know, I've can't like. There's this guy named Boogie. I'm seeing him pop up on YouTube right now because he's he faked cancer to get a bunch of donation money, but he got caught. And now his scheme didn't work. But perceivably, he saw a way that if he lied and convinced people that he wasn't lying, he could get some money. But it ended up not working out for him. Um, so, and, you know, God hates that. But also, making money hates that too. So hands that shed innocent blood. That's kind of self-explanatory. If you fuck someone over who didn't deserve it, kind of like society has like this uh, – this, uh, pack mentality this lizard brain that if you hear about somebody who fucks over innocent people they become immediately untrustworthy because it's all breaking down into like uh survival and like uh, survival tactics and if somebody sheds innocent blood and you are acting in good faith slash innocent then somebody who sheds innocent blood you can no longer do business with them um because they may fuck you over too because like an indicator the best indicator of future uh, actions are past um Actions. So, you know what I mean? There's that. A heart that devises wicked schemes, same thing. 
um, a heart that devises wicked schemes. So if you try to like think of like, uh, and I fall in this temptation all the time, I come up with like these crazy schemes. Um, if I, I don't know, like with RuneScape's a good example. I, uh, I'm friends with like people who cheat like botters and stuff like that. And I tell them that it's bad and stuff like that. But I always come up like, hell man, like at my job, my last job, I was telling friends about how I would be able to, um, I could easily, I could easily make twice as what I was making. I was making about, uh, uh, 50 to 60 K a year doing my last job and just botting RuneScape cool. Um, just cause I know the intricacies and I've, I've been in the scene, um, for 20 something years and I know enough about like computers and I have enough hardware and stuff like that. And I know enough about how Jagex handles cheaters. I could easily double my income in a couple of months running bot farms. Plus I could also run bot farms while I was working a job anyway, because it is passive income, but passive income that could be leveraged to make a lot of money. But I've always tried to stop myself from doing it because perceivably these wicked schemes will make a lot of money. You've probably heard about like people using AI to make fake OnlyFans and extracting wealth from the um, distraughtin males who are addicted to pornography. But also, I feel like that is hope. I'm waiting for the stories to blow up in people's faces that these wicked schemes do not pay off in the end. They're not. They're not good for long term longevity. They're not good for long term growth. Um, first thing you have to give up when you do wicked things and like go against your own personal conscience is give up your conscience. That's the first thing you have to get rid of. And your conscience is, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's bad news. It does not grow wealth. It's not good because it's high risk, high reward, but high risk means it could cost you everything. But the first thing it costs is like the those, I imagine those types of schemes cost peace a hundred percent of the time. And to me, that is like not good. Um, without peace, like what's the point of the wealth anyway? So yeah, feet that are quick, feet that are quick to rush into evil. So this is, um, quick to rush into evil kind of just means like low impulse control. Like if you have an impulse, uh, if you have low impulse control, yes, you'll impulsively do good things, but you'll also do bad things. So just low impulse control is what it's talking about here. A false witness who pours out lies, obviously, but these, these are just high ranking things that like God or, you know, karma would say are bad, just big bads. And a person who stirs up conflict in the community, because if you just sow um, disunity in a community, uh, a, a kingdom divided against itself cannot prosper. And anybody who works at a company or has been in high school or whatever or anything like that, if there's any division in like a family or any whatever, um, there's nobody's immune to criticism. That's not what this is saying. Like, do not um, criticize. Do not keep people accountable. Hold, hold people accountable. Don't do stuff like that. But if you're just stirring up conflicts just to stir the pot, you know what I mean? Like trolling or talking crap or trying to get the group to ostracize somebody because they're different or stuff like that. This is what that is talking about specifically. And like, there's many reasons why this doesn't promote growth because the main one I would say is because what if people did this to you? So then anybody who promotes that in a community, it could happen to you anytime. So it's not good for you to do that type of stuff. And you know, karma, the universe slash God slash Jesus hates this. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Warning, it's adultery. Oh, it's been running for a while now, huh? Warning against adultery, uh, verse 20. My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. This is multiple times we've been seeing this. Uh, this this has been multiple times already since our little series that this has been being seen. So this is, it's very, it's it's imperative that like what, what, what this means, um, why, like what I've come to interpret from seeing this so many times pop up in the Bible multiple times and in Proverbs and stuff like that is that the more something is repeated, uh, your, your brain is kind of like soil. You know what I mean? Like school, if you everybody's been to school, they don't just like tell you what addition is and then have you do it and then move on to the next thing. They teach it to you. They make you do homework. Then they teach you a little bit about it. They teach you an entire section and make you do homework about it. And then homework is a little bit of a progressive overload. Um, so you'll add and then you'll add fractions or something like that, for instance, or you'll add decibels or something like that. And then, you know, at the end of the week, then you'll have a test on it so that you can see if you learned what you applied, but the test also too is also another uh, repetition of that. And then the next subject will be a little bit of what you had before. So you'll be repeating it again a little bit. And that's kind of what's going on here. It's because it's the way that like humanity is. It's like how we, we have a lot of, we have like, we are a lot like a computer or computers are a lot like us is a better way to say it, but we have a Ram, we have random access memory. And that's like your daily um, computational power, your daily thoughts and stuff like that. But then you also have a hard drive and the way your hard drive stores memories is things that it thinks is important. So things that are important are things that pop up, things that uh, pop up in um, intense moments, stuff like that. But this is like, 
This is a uh, so this is somebody with experience from the intensity of a who's experienced why this is important. So it's stuck to them, and they're just really trying to like um, really imprint that emotion onto you by repeating like, "Bro, you really need like you know like." Um, Bro, please don't do crack. I, I am a crackhead. I've done crack before. And man, holy crap, bro. You, 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 like, man, if I could teach you one thing, it would be not to smoke crack because X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. And you know what I mean? And uh, crack is super bad. Like, that. that's what I mean. Like, there's, it's, it's just a part of the process. Uh, so verse 22, when you walk, they will guide you. This is why we're keeping our Father's command. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you are awake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp. For this teaching is a light. And correction and instruction are the way of life. Keeping you from your neighbor's wife. Man, they got some bars here. Life, wife. From the smooth talk of a wayward woman. Wayward meaning like contentious. Meaning like somebody who's angry. Somebody who stirs up trouble. Um, whatever. Do not lust in your heart after her beauties. Or let her captivate you with her eyes. For a prostitute can be had for a loaf of bread. But another man's wife preys on your very life. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? So he, so is he who sleeps with another man's wife. No one who touches her will go unpunished. All right. So this here, um, it's, it doesn't need a lot of, uh, he doesn't need, he doesn't feel like he needs a lot of evidence to argue that sleeping with a prostitute is um, not good. Not to fall in love with a prostitute because they can be bought for a loaf of bread. So it's like, yeah, you can sleep with them, but then like, don't expect a wife out of her, I guess, because she can be bought for a loaf of bread. So that just means that she can be bought. So I mean, like, the love's not. It's just insinuating that the love's not real, and then that would be like the uh, anti wealth growing activity. Uh, can a man scoop? And then also he talks a lot about uh, sleeping with another man's wife. So lusting after another girl who is in a relationship. And I, I feel like this is kind of self-explanatory, but I mean, just from what I see about the pop culture and stuff like that, people have no restraint when it comes to sexual ethics. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there that will like, they think it's okay to go at, like go after like, uh, people inside of uh, monogamous relationships because it's their choice or whatever. So in that, mo like if they, like, you know what I mean? So it's not like, there's no, I don't know how to say this. If you sleep with another man's wife, um, you may think, I think a lot of it has to break down to like the culture we live in is so peaceful and the cops will literally stop anybody from committing any violence against anyone. So then they like, it's a risk assessment and it's a numbers game to people who are trying to sleep with lots of people. Um, or whatever, you know what I mean? It seems good in the moment. Don't, I don't care if you're in a relationship. I'm going to ruin your entire family's life. I want to have sex with you. I'm going to have sex with you. But then this is a warning that like you should <laughs> not have sex with other people's, especially if they're in a relationship, because the significant other of that person is going to never like that is like like to me personally. Like if somebody tried like if somebody slept with my girlfriend, I would never. That would be like the hardest thing in the world for me to forgive. And like, this is, it's it, like the, uh, the, the, pa the picture painted here uh, is that like, holy moly, I would not be okay with that. And I don't think I ever would. And I would never, I would be able to maybe, I'd like to think I'd be able to forgive somebody who would like do that, but I would never forget them. Um, so there's that. Okay. So it's just a bad idea uh, on top of everything. It's just a bad idea. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger while he is starving. Yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it costs him all the wealth of his house. You know what I mean? So, I mean, like, yeah, this is just true, you know, but this is to build up for um, the argument of not sleeping with another girl. So verse 32, but a man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. Blows and disgrace are his lot and his shame will never be wiped away. So this is like the, um, this is the type of stuff that made me like, really, I mean, cause I like, I felt like, um, pornography was wrong. Um, ever since I was like consuming it, I never really felt good about it. Um, but like seeing this stuff after like trying to pull myself away from it really like nailed it home to me and just really thinking about it. Um, 
blows and disgrace are my lot. Shame will never be wiped away. Like committing adultery or like per, like it, even adultery is even masturbating or watching consuming pornography or anything like that. It never gets wiped away. Um, if you're if you're participating in it once, you know, once a year, you're just that guy who beats off once a year to porn. I I, I don't know. It's like it's 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 so anti. It's a very weird thing to talk about. First off, and then second off, there is no value to be gained. No money. Like if you're if you're watching this, you're somehow watching this, and you think that like anything sexual outside of like a uh, family, um, uh, outside of, outside of pair bonding, monogamy, is going to help you build wealth, then you're insane. That's just all I have to say about it. Um, verse thirty four, jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will not accept any compensation. He will refuse a bribe, however great it is. Yeah, like, yeah, personally, if anybody, like, slept with my girl and tried to, like, bribe me to not, like, go after them, I would never accept any amount of money, ever. Because it's just like, dude, you're, like, destroying a, a man's wife. Or uh, uh, you're destroying an entire family. You're destroying somebody's entire life by going after somebody's girl. But, yeah. So, kind of a weird way to end this, but uh, that is the entire chapter here. And that is... Warnings Against Folly, How to Grow Wealth, version 6, or episode 7, Proverbs 6. Thank you all for watching, and yeah, like I said, weird, but still, still valuable. So I will catch you in the next episode.